Hi, I'm Chris from Mirror Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Perry Q. So here's an interesting thing. I've had this sitting on my desktop on the coding laptop for, I don't even know. This kind of got started around when I was doing console MC, so literally years. And I had never tried to do it with the topology that I used for Smooth EQ2. I've got this thing going on, which is also in use in like pointy guitar and so on, where I can take equalizer algorithms and do multiple phases of them by doing them all subtractively. Like this is treble, it's a simple low pass and then mid, and then treble, mid is just the low pass, treble is uh, regular sound subtracted uh, mid. And then low mid could be that subtracting a low. And well, it works basically like this. Let me demonstrate that on some drums. So this is normal sound that you're probably used to hearing. And what you do is you first do a simple filter. And it is highs with a simple low pass removed. You're hearing what the low pass is. And here's what you're subtracting from. And then you take that and you subtract again. And that's just a mid-range frequency here. And then you take this and you subtract again. And you keep getting these, but what you're also doing is supposing you have that high, right? So that's high frequencies from the original recording. You can run that separately. Or if you've taken the uh, highs out, and then you have that mid-range, and then you've taken the mids out, so you have like this and below. You can then subtract that from your high mid. All of a sudden you have this. And the thing that's important about that is if you're doing it every pole of the filtering, you get to add them back together again and have the result be identical. Now that might not sound like a interesting concept, but it turns out it is very different from what I was doing with console MC, for instance, or console LA, the stuff that I was using the pair filter on. And you wouldn't be able to do stuff like this. There's just the highs. Here's mids. All of a sudden we can hear the snare. We couldn't hear the snare before. That's because it's very good isolation. Low mids. I had somebody on the live stream who was uh, watching me develop this and they were like, can we do something that takes out all the low mids? We, and I labeled it, no, for the idea of you'd remove this sound. and get this result. Like here is with low mids, and then if you take all the low mids out, that's some serious isolation. Works on the regular drums too. Also works on synthetic sounds. And the synthetic sounds can also show us some of these other features such as we have separate bass and subs. So for this one, here's what a low mid sound like. And we have an extremely powerful bass. But subs is the octave even lower than that. It's almost entirely under 40 hertz and it's very well isolated so you can control it individually. Yeah, probably can't hear that but it's peaking out pretty high in the meters. 
So you can make a sort of boom and tickle effect by having all the super highs and all the super lows. We're distorting with all the lows now. Or maybe you want to have none of the extreme subs and maybe none of the highs. Maybe you want more of those limits or a lot less. And that's PeriQ. This is the final development of something that I started years ago. Because here's the thing. I've been developing this kind of stuff in some cases using biquad filters. That's basically where we got Smoothie Q2. Because Smoothie Q2 is using biquad filtering to do extremely powerful, capable things with these filter bands. Like it lets you act as if you have four shelves that can also tilt. They act like you're doing sweepable mids, except for it's sweepable everything. And they'll still become neutral if you have them set flat. This is not that. This is a six band, it's basically a six band graphic. And it sounds very much like a six band graphic. So if you put on some music, and you're just pushing like high mids, well, you can push the high mids or pull low mids out. Or maybe the funny thing about this track, it doesn't sound like it, but it also has extremely strong subs. So maybe you want to cut the subs completely. Pull low mids out. The regular mids, you'll probably want to use an appropriate amount of them. Like you don't necessarily want to pull them all out completely. And maybe you don't want the highs so much as high mids. And you can just shape it into whichever you want. But it's maybe more approachable than Smoothie Q2 because it just acts like a graphic. Basically, there's no concerns. In, the funny thing about it is, although it will add up to perfectly flat if you leave it perfectly flat, that's the way that the um, geometry the topology of the filtering works. Neither of those are probably the correct word, and I don't care. Um, but um, using the weird steepness of the filters thing that's going on in Smoothie Q lets you do a whole sweepable thing, but it also can make it sound like you've got funny resonant filters going on. And maybe that's not what you want for a mix. Well, this is a thing where you can take the mix, have extremely sonorous, present sounding bands, but they also act real steep. And they act real steep in a funny way in that it never acts like there is a resonant peak somewhere. And in fact, the bands kind of act like a sort of curved, it, it, it's weird the way they work, but it equals out to perfectly flat if you've got stuff set flat relative to each other. And it does the thing pair filters do, which is try to roll off steeper and steeper until it has total cancellation. And this is not something that I had working very effectively in uh, graphic style EQs until now. So this should be interesting. I'm looking forward to throwing this at people because there's a lot that gets, I, it has me wor wondering, I was going to say worrying, about whether I want to do some variation on this for like uh, the console AW I'm looking to do, 
which is currently designed for SmoothieQ2 just because I think it is so powerful that it's going to do everything that I want. But SmoothieQ2 doesn't have as many poles of filtering, but it has way more control over them when you're using them. And this has way more poles, but the filtering itself is a lot simpler. And then, of course, the extreme of that is something like pointy guitar or chimey guitar or whatever. There's even more variations coming on that where it is um, angle EQ, which is an even simpler algorithm because I do that. I try to experiment with different algorithms than people normally use. And normally that's because they don't behave properly by themselves. Like you can't actually use angle EQ for a nice measurement style EQ that behaves normally because it super doesn't. That's why it's going to be showing up in an upcoming plugin called Cabs2, where I'm exploiting the way that it can sound like a speaker cabinet by completely screwing up the phase relationships. Because why not? Like everything finds its place. And I think that pair EQ is going to really find its place as far as being an accessible thing that people can use to do useful stuff with. So this could lead, it, not in the immediate future, but this could lead to me revisiting those uh, analog console style console versions that I did where one was supposed to sound like an MCI console, except for kind of, I worked on that one. Uh, one was supposed to sound like the um, Quad 8. And I could revisit those with this technology because I did not have this when I made those. And I think they suffer a little bit for it, but you know, it was the best I could do at the time. And time keeps passing and I keep working on this stuff. That's largely thanks to my Patreon. I won't beat that into the ground other than to say I do have that new um, tier going on where I'm showing people songs that I liked or are interesting to study in Air Windows Meter at the $10 and up tier. And I have an interesting one coming up because I've been reading this book and I just read through the part on uh, Dage in Sweden, in Swimex, which became you know, like the Max Martin school of pop hit making. And it talked about the creation of the Ace of Bass smash, The Sign. And people seem to be able to react to that publicly. So I ran it through meter and oh my God, mind you, you have to have the old CD of it. This is off a CD, it's not even off a of vinyl, but wow. And it is, a uh, no comment education in how to use peak energy across all frequencies, but that's going up for the ten dollar and up patrons. But everybody gets Perry Q, and everybody gets everything else that I'm developing, software wise, plugin wise, sound effects wise, all of that. I just got to come up with something nice for the people who are helping me out with like my car payment and stuff, and. You might notice slight differences in how things look, and that's because I've gotten so ahead of things as far as building plugins is concerned that I've had time to look at my studio a little bit as well. So I'm rebuilding that, and I have hopes of getting back into the studio. Maybe we will end up having songs that aren't just these same things that I've been playing for years, but one thing about them, you can hear when I've got a radically different plugin sound going, because anybody who's been familiar with what I've been doing over the years has probably heard this stuff before, but not necessarily like this. On that note, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.